great with words uh, and uh, very uh, enamoured of British history, loved the, the royal side of British history, uh, and uh, he was very, uh, very sort of close to the monarchy of the empire, promoting all these, uh, these sort of traditional elements of, uh, of Britain. But Disraeli knew what he was doing. He knew that uh, he was very close to the Queen and he, uh, he indulged in a lot of, he charmed her, he flattered her. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was clear that although he might mean many of these things uh, and he was genuine, there was also an element of calculation in what he was saying. Uh, there was a private letter which he wrote to Matthew Arnold, uh, the famous writer, and he said, everyone loves flattery and when you come to royalty, he should lay it on with a trowel. Uh, so, so he knew what he was doing. He knew that uh, this was the way up the greasy pole, as he called it, the way to maintain favour, grace and favour. The monarchy still had quite a bit of power uh, and influence in this period. Uh, and so Disraeli uh, clearly knew that it was best to keep them on side. Uh, and uh, so the traditional respect he had for the monarchy uh, was sort of allied to this because of element of calculation uh, keeping on her good side. But interestingly enough, uh, Victoria does seem to share Disraeli's views by this time and she becomes a very keen uh, supporter of the, the British Empire uh, and sort of traditional conservative institutions like the Church of England and the like, which had been a, a real shift from her earlier position. She'd been attached to the Whigs, uh, the Liberals, in the early part of her reign when she'd been very young. Uh, so she changed her political views over time. But as I've said, she didn't really show these overtly in public life. It was seen as not acceptable by this time for the Queen to take uh, a position in politics to favour one side or the other. And Disraeli was the one who came up with the idea to make her Empress of India, which again was a, a very flattering thing to do, uh, to, uh, to give her this title. And it was, it was legislated into existence. So the Royal Titles Act in its 1876 made her Empress of India. It was a made up title. It was something which was, which was made to flatter her and to promote the grandeur and the glory of the British Empire, if you like. But effectively, it, was, it, was, it, wasn't, mean, it wasn't really meaningful in any way, uh, but uh, there hadn't been any Empress of India before that. So it was a, just a, a, made up, a made up title but one that was very effective, and Victoria loved it. Uh, she, loved, she loved the idea of being Empress of India, uh, and we went through the, the whole formal ceremony uh, in Delhi in 1877 uh, with all the paraphernalia, the pageantry, uh, and uh, Disraeli is, a, is a, uh, raised to the peerage in 1880, becomes a lord, partly on the back, uh, I think, of this, uh, of raising, of, of giving her this title. So, uh, clearly a bit of flattery and back scratching going on on both sides there, uh, but uh, Disraeli clearly knew uh, what he was doing here. Now she didn't enjoy good relations with the other great figure of Victorian politics in this period, and that's uh, Gladstone, uh, of the, the Liberal leader, great Liberal Prime Minister, much more of an intellectual than a charmer or a flatterer, uh, and someone who wasn't necessarily going to uh, to play the same role as Disraeli had played towards her. Uh, much more of an issues-based politician and he wasn't going to be uh, sort of a kowtow to the monarchy necessarily, uh, although he was still very respectful uh, of the monarchy uh, and of the Queen. Uh, but the Queen famously said that she felt that when she was talking to him that he was addressing a, a public meeting. Uh, so he was almost haranguing her, uh, talking at her rather than having a conversation and a free exchange of views. Uh, he was... Uh, he was you know, shaking his fist and, and <laughs> telling her what's what. Uh, but I think, <clears throat> I think they didn't have quite as bad relations as is sometimes portrayed. Uh, people like to write and to portray these kind of personal relationships with great contrast. So you had Disraeli on the one side who was uh, ingratiating himself with her and was very close to her. And then you were able to counterpoise that with Gladstone who was uh, the opposite of her and who was very remote from her. I don't think it was ever quite like that. Uh, I think they, they, they got on reasonably well, uh, but they didn't have the sort of natural uh, sympathy for each other, perhaps, uh, which uh, she enjoyed with Disraeli. Mm -hmm. 